Greetings, sisters and brothers. This is Milton Ali Mahdi, publisher and editor of Black Star News. Please visit us on blackstarnews.com. You can also reach me at malimadi at gmail.com. I'm also adjunct professor of African history at John Jay College here in New York City. I want to speak a couple of minutes today about Libya. I think Libya is the best example of Kwame Nkrumah's dreams turned nightmare. Nkrumah warned in his book, Neo-Colonialism, the last stage of imperialism, of something like Libya. Nkrumah warned, in fact, the best way to summarize that book is that Nkrumah feared that so long as African countries remain balkanized and not united, African countries individually would not be able to protect their sovereignty, and if you can't protect your sovereignty, you cannot protect your resources. That is exactly what happened in Libya. Libya was attacked by Europeans, by NATO. <laughs> it was a European war of aggression. The whole objective was to remove Colonel Gaddafi at all costs, regardless of the destruction to Libya, regardless of the fact that NATO and the countries that were supporting the war knew they were unleashing some of the worst criminals to become in power in Libya. And that's precisely what happened. I know a lot of the Western corporate media did not cover the fact that the rebels had a very racist component. We wrote about it a lot here in the, in the Black Star News. And in fact, I explained in the past how we were even blocked from access to our website. And then when we managed to recover our website, we found that one of the most critical editorials we wrote, urging people to take action, to call the White House, call the NAACP, Urban Lee, State Department, the New York Times, and complain as to why the racist targeting of black Libyans and migrant workers from other African countries was not being condemned or adequately covered. So we wrote about that. The Wall Street Journal also did, as I mentioned in my last commentary. Look up articles by Sam Dagger, D-A-G-H-E-R. African countries are now talking about doing something about slavery in Libya. Well, you know what? You're coming very, very late into the game. I think when NATO decided to attack Libya, African countries should have taken the position that Kwame Nkrumah would have taken, that an attack on an African country is an attack on Africa. African countries should have deployed troops in Libya. It would have taken just 10 countries to send 2,000 troops each. That's 20,000 troops from 10 different African countries. There's no way in hell that NATO is going to bombard troops from 10 different African countries. Let's say we had big names like South Africa involved. Of course, South Africa under Zuma ended up voting for the Security Council resolution that allowed the bombing, even though that's not <laughs> what it was intended to do. It was supposedly to protect civilians from Colonel Gaddafi's troops, right? What about a major country like Ghana? What about Nigeria? Had all these countries contributed troops, there's no way in hell that NATO would have been able to destroy Libya without taking the risk of having to confront all those other African countries as well, and destroy a relationship with all those countries as well. Nkrumah would not have allowed this to happen had Nkrumah been alive today. So shame on you, African leaders. And look at today. Where is the rage? Where is the outrage <laughs> about the ongoing uh, slavery and uh, auctioning of, uh, of black people in Libya? Where is the rage? How do you show your rage? African Union is talking about an investigation. You investigate smuggling of diamond, of gold. You don't investigate when everybody knows what's going on in Libya. This is a time for action. This is when you call the Libyan ambassador in your country and you say, pack, you have to leave in 24 hours. And you shut down the embassy. And you call for economic, cultural embargo unless something is seriously done. You don't say you're going to investigate. 
You're not investigating the smuggling of diamonds or gold. You're talking about the brutal trading of human beings in slave auctions in the 21st century. Shame on you, African leaders. Shame. Shame on you for your tepid response. The ancestors are embarrassed. The ancestors are ashamed of you. The ancestors whose bones are buried in the plantations in the South. The ancestors whose graves are the sea beds of the Atlantic Ocean. The ancestors who may be buried somewhere in the Libyan deserts today. Shame on you. You need to take much more serious action. Show some rage, because if you're not outraged, why should the Libyans themselves be outraged? So sisters and brothers, I'm sorry you got me a little worked up today. I'm really worked up today. I'll be a little more calm when I do my third commentary on Libya. Thank you, sisters and brothers.